Hello everyone, I'm the Jarek Law. You might remember me from Star Trek Online voice commands demonstration, or Star Trek Online more voice commands. Probably the latter as that got a lot more views than the other one, but either way, I'm back again after quite some time to address the literally tens of people in the comment section who were wondering how I did this, and I'm going to show you now. Uh, so, first things first, I'm just going to explain a little bit about what I'm going to do. Hopefully, I'm going to make two or three videos of this. Um, maybe not too long, probably about five to ten minutes in length each, just explaining different concepts behind what I've done. This first one will be introducing uh, the basics and how to do some simple abilities, um, like, for example, the first row of abilities you can see here, and um, ship maneuvering and uh, weapons firing and things like that. Um, the other videos will be to do with more like the second and third uh, row of abilities, attack, custom attack patterns, and things of that nature that are more complex and require just a little bit more understanding. Uh, hopefully they will be released pretty much simultaneously. I just wanted to make sure that these videos were split up for people who uh, only wanted to know how to do one thing and not the other and didn't want to watch a 20 to 30 minute video on it. Uh, so yeah, now I've got that out of the way. In order to do uh, the, uh, the commands I've displayed in here, you're going to need two pieces of software. One of which is Windows Speech Recognition Macros, which you can find by googling that sentence and clicking on the first link. This is a product directly from Microsoft. It basically en enables you to choose how to use its speech recognition software and teach it new words so that it can do whatever you want it to. So you'll have to go ahead and download that. It's a pretty small file. You should be okay with it. Um, yeah, so download and install that. The other program is called AutoHotkey.com. Uh, not .com. That's the website. But there it is up there. Um, you won't need to use this for this video. This is mainly for the more complex things later on, and mostly for the second set of abilities, which you can see down here. Uh, just because of the way the STO UI works, um, you can't use uh, Control plus 1 in Windows Speech macros because it sends the commands too fast and the game just interprets that as activating the abilities on the top row. Which you might remember is what happened when I was trying to activate security teams that one time. It accidentally activated the ability above it, Emergency Power Shields. That was just because I had used that original command in uh, speech recognition and did not bother to delete it, so it decided to go for that one instead of tactical team, which is what I really wanted. So yeah, go ahead and download this, it's pretty much free, I don't think there's any like software it tries to add on, um, but anyway, I I'm sure you're smart enough to dodge all of its change my search engine rubbish. Uh, so once you've got that uh, installed, you should be pretty much ready to start doing this. It should be fairly easy, although it is relatively time consuming as well. So just a heads up. Uh, but what else can you, what can you do with uh, the speech recognition? Like, there's lots of things I've, I've shown, but uh, what are the limitations? Well, if we check out the uh, key binding section of um, Star Trek Online, basically anything of, uh, you can bind to a key on uh, the keyboard or onto your mouse. Basically any of that you can turn into a uh, speech command. So you've got things like uh, you can control the camera theoretically, although I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, you can fire your weapons, reroute your shields, uh, choose your targets, use your skills, things like that. All of this you can do with the um, uh, voice commands. Also anything you can put onto your power tray in either or any of the first, second, third or fourth rows you can also activate using uh, voice commands. So that's things like slipstream drive and um, uh, usables like auxiliary battery and scorpion fighters, things like that. You can activate all of those taskbar, therefore you can do them in speech recognition. Uh, so pretty much that's all you're able to do. Um, a lot of things require thinking outside the box. For example, when I used the command to rotate my ship 180 degrees, I basically just timed how long it took this Galaxy class to t 
turn all the way around by holding down the D button and then from that I calculated how long I would need to emulate holding down the D button for it to turn 180 degrees. Kind of messed that up because it does require you to like have the camera still for a certain period of time and it will change when you've got thrust. Uh, so bear that in mind. I'll just stop here. Um, so yeah, things like that you kind of got to think outside the box, which is why I'm going to put it into a completely different part, and I'll go into more details then. But for now, let's just do the simple things. So for, I've like already done most of these, but it's always good to have like secondary commands for it, just in case you forget the command in combat. So I'm going to go ahead and try and make another macro for hazard emitters, because the current one I've got is with venting plasma, and that's a fairly long one. So first, what you need to do once you've downloaded your um, speech recognition macros is you need to go into your start menu and you need to start speech recognition macros that you just uh, installed. It will bring up the original speech recognition which I will disable as soon as I can because I'm currently using the microphone for a more impor important purpose. Okay, so let's just turn you off. And you'll see down here in the corner you've got Windows speech recognition macros. Basically this enables at the same time as uh, speech recognition so you can uh, sort of run this simultaneously and uh, use speech command and the new macros you've got. So what you want to do is right click on it and go to new speech recognition macro and you'll be given a list of possibilities. You should go for the advanced one because we're going to be making our own command in this XML format. Uh, so you'll see here we've got a standard XML uh, code snippet um, if you're not familiar with XML, then don't worry, it's not too difficult. I'll explain as much as I can along the way. So what we wanted to do, want to do is in between these two uh, pointy arrows, you'll want to put in what you want the speech recognition to listen for. So, for example, um, I'm doing hazard emitters, so let's say activate hazard emitters. Uh, you don't need to capitalize in any way. Um, but just for my own sake I did. Uh, this is what the program will listen for, hence the listen for tag, and it's what you'll say to activate the ability. So if we go down here then... Really? Tab doesn't work? Alright, press a bunch of spaces until you're roughly in line, and then you're going to create a new um, bracket. This one is called send keys with a capital K but not a capital S, that is important. Make sure you get the uh, format right. And this will tell it the program which key to send to Star Trek Online. Hazard emitters is in my 7 slot, I think. Yep, 7 slot. So I'll do that. And then you've also got to close out the uh, brackets you made with the same thing, but with a slash just before the first, or just after the first pointy bracket. Again, remember to capitalize the K, but not the S. Um, is it keys or key? Hmm. I think it's keys. Let me just check that actually. Yeah, it's keys. My bad, it send keys. Sorry, I have not done this in a while, so um, I probably should have done a practice before I did this, but oh well, I'm going to wing it. Uh, so that's basically all you need to do. However, I like to add in another command, which is speak, I think. Yes, speak. Is that a capital S? I don't know. I'll find out. Uh, so you type in speak and this is basically what the computer will say back to you because whenever you activate an ability it's nice to have the audio feedback so that you know it's actually worked in, without having to look at your hotbar. Because the whole purpose of this is trying to minimize your involvement so if you can just not have to look at your hotbar for whatever reason and just like look at the screen and see what's happening it's probably an advantage. So I'm just going to go with the standard speak um, hazard emitters activated and remember to close out the bracket so it will it will say this to its best uh, the best way it can but it will try if you are having problems with it saying things wrong you can try and like spell it phonetically and it will probably work because um, you won't actually see this except for up here um, and I think there's a command to make it display something different up here but it will probably display this. So whatever you've got written here it will have written up there. Of course 
you generally don't see that in videos and you probably shouldn't really be paying attention too much to it but this helps you diagnose if something's going wrong like if it, the computer can't understand you which is entirely possible because um, it's not that great of a speech recognition. It's still in its infancy, so bear that in mind. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the pretty much completed XML. If we hit next, uh, you can save this to a specific file if you wish. I'm going to keep it in the default place, which is C users, your username, documents, speech recognition, mac speech macros, and then it will save it in a WSR Mac format. I recommend you change the name of this to something like um, Hazard Emitters 2. Cause this is the second ability of this is the second command I've got that will activate Hazard Emitters. Um, yeah, make sure you've got the extension on the end again. Uh, but definitely try and keep this formatted properly because I have not, um, and I am instantly regretting it. I will show you what that means in a moment, but. Um, First of all, remember to disable this digitally sign this macro uh, because that gets you into a lot of security problems and it's, it's not worth it. You know what this does so it doesn't really matter that it's not signed. Then click create and it will say new speech macro has been created. You can confirm this. We're going to downloads, documents, speech macros and you can see down here this is the one we just created. As you can see, I have not been so diligent previously, and I have absolutely no idea which what most of these do. So, um, don't learn from my mistakes. It may also be a good idea just to name this like the key it sends, for example, 7. Um, that's what I've done here for the auto hotkey scripts, pretty much. Um, c because it doesn't really send hazard emitters, it only sends the key in. Um, what you've got here. So if I were to switch brace for impact and hazard emitters, I can't because I've locked the tray. I can. I haven't locked the tray. Hmm. Should probably lock the tray. But um, if I were to do that, then brace for impact would activate instead of hazard emitters when I called it because again it's assigned to seven. So if we go ahead here and enable speech recognition, I can show you that hopefully it should work. Activate hazard emitters. Hazard emitters activated. Standby. Actually, I'm going to turn that off completely. Um, so yeah, you can see that worked. Hazard limiters were indeed activated when I called it. Uh, one thing to note, um, you can't actually change the command for turning on speech recognition from anything other than start listening. I don't know why, but that's just the one command that is hard-coded not to be able to be changed, which is really annoying, but, you know, for what we've got, a free version of a software that can do pretty much what we want, I'm willing to sacrifice that one command. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty much the end of this video. Um, as I said, there's going to be another one which goes over more detailed things like uh, the rest of the bar and um, even more difficult manoeuvres like setting up evasive manoeuvres and attack patterns and things like that. Uh, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section. And good luck!